how do they do it? Several companies have been in the news recently, Starbucks, Google and eBay, and all for the same reason. And it's not one they want to be in the news for, it's paying very, very, very little tax. Going to take a look at that topic in this video and ask the question, how is it that according to Reuters, Starbucks has only paid around eight and a half million dollars in tax over the last few years when it's made billions of dollars of sales of coffee and the like. Similar accusations have been leveled at Google, eBay and one or two other companies. So how do they do it? All right, going to get to that in just a moment. I'm going, I'm going to reveal three little tricks that companies like that in the retail sector can employ to minimize their tax bills. Now, before I set off, let me just say one thing. None of those companies have been accused of doing anything illegal. Avoiding tax is all about negotiating using expensive accountants and lawyers with HMRC, the tax authorities in this country, and reducing the amount of tax you pay. And the name of the game, if you want to pay a little bit of tax, is to declare low profits. All right, so you need to get that into your heads watching this video. If you're talking to investors as a company, you want nice big profits, we're doing incredibly well. If you're talking to the amount of revenue, you put your dour face on and you say, oh no, we don't make any money because if we're not making any money, you can't charge us any tax. Okay, so the name of the game is reducing profits when you're talking to the tax man, so you pay less tax at whatever rate on those profits, all right? So first thing is, we're not accusing these companies of doing anything illegal, immoral, dodgy, possibly yes, but not illegal, all right? Secondly, we're talking about one tax, corporation tax. It's a bit of a weird tax, it's the tax that companies pay. Now companies are not people, okay? Um, Starbucks isn't a person, all right? So most people are used to taxes on people, all right? So for example, Starbucks does pay other taxes in the UK. It employs around 5,000 people and it has to pay national insurance contributions, which won't go into here on those employees, and it pays business rates and so on. But the tax we're talking about is a tax on the Starbucks company itself. It's called corporation tax, all right? And that's the only one I'm gonna cover. And the third point I should clarify, because one or two journalists have got this completely wrong, all right, is that you do not pay corporation tax on sales, you pay it on profits, all right? But there's still a problem, because most people think, well, surely Starbucks makes lots of profits, surely it sells lots of coffee, gets expanding at a rate of knots, um, why is it paying so little tax, all right? So what are the three tricks? Now, there are many, many, many tricks that expensive accountants working for these companies can use to reduce the tax bill. I'm gonna focus on three, all right? And I'm not saying all of the companies I mentioned are using these tricks all of the time, but they're good ones if you're a retailer trying to cut your tax bill down. So what are they? Okay, here's a little scenario, and here's one of my dodgy diagrams, okay? So, let's put the UK in the middle. All right, and people who've watched me draw before will know that um, that's the UK, okay? Small triangle island, all right? Now it's pretty clear. Now, that's the UK. Let's introduce a couple more countries. All right, I'm going to put the rest of Europe over here with Holland about there. All right, you'll see why in a moment. And I'm gonna put uh, the US over here. All right, now my sketching skills are pretty fabulous. All right, there's the, the Gulf of Mexico, pretty clearly, so there's the USA. All right, and these are the three main players in this piece. Now, the thing to remember is this. When you're talking about um, the Starbucks case at the moment, for example, you're talking about not the whole Starbucks global empire. Starbucks, as you know, has coffee shops all over the place. America, Europe, UK, all right. The bit where UK corporation tax is paid is here. The operation in the UK, all right. The inland revenue in this country is not worrying about how much tax the, the Starbucks in America pays or in Holland, right. We're just talking about the UK operation now. Here's the trick, okay? Let's put uh, Starbucks, here are three tricks, in fact, like that. Stores all over the country, all right? Now, what can you do? Here's what you wanna do with Starbucks. You want your profits, remember this, your profits to be as low as possible for tax purposes in the UK, just for tax purposes, all right? Investors won't be happy if you say, we make no money. Well, investors wanna hear you make lots of money, but the story is different, okay? You put your tax hat on and you go and talk to the inland revenue and say, oh no, we make barely any money. Now, how can a company that is seemingly selling loads of coffee, and everyone knows that coffee is incredibly profitable, 
All right, incredibly profitable. What would you pay for a for a cappuccino mocha latte chai thing these days? Um, maybe it's three or four pound a cup. Okay, certainly is uh, where I live. Um, and the cost is what a bit of you know polystyrene and some coffee beans. I mean, there must be a phenomenal profit on that. All right, so people are thinking, you know, I know they have to pay for shops and so on, but they must make must be making money. So how is it that they're managing to present a picture to the inland revenue? But they're not, they're not making money. How does that work? Well, the answer is you need to find ways, if you're the tax bod here, of getting the profit for tax purposes down as low as possible. How do you do that? And the answer is profit, as I cover in other videos, is your sales revenue minus costs. All right? So you could lie about your sales revenue, but that's going to be a bit difficult. Wouldn't recommend that one. All right? That's easy to check. But what you can do is bring your costs up so your profit is next to nothing, and your tax bill is also next to nothing. Right, so how do you get those costs up? How do you raise the costs, bring down the profit, and then go, actually, corporation tax rate, maybe 25% in the UK, but 25% of nothing is nothing. Ha ha. Okay, how do you do it? Three tricks coming up now. Right, number one. Number one, here's an idea. You could fund, so let's put head office HQ, for Starbucks Worldwide over there, it's an American company after all, you could get head office to fund your UK operation. All right? So in other words, head office basically pump debt into the UK business to get it started. I mean, you can't create stores out of nothing, they'll be funded somehow, about property and so on. All right? And then you pay interest back to head office. And the great thing about borrowing money from another company in your group is who sets the rate. And the answer is the worldwide finance director over here, probably. All right, so in other words, you can set the rate at a level that starts to absorb some of the profits that the UK operation is making. All right, imagine, you know, for argument's sake, um, 100 million profits, operating profits, the interest bill at a rate set by HQ over here knocks out you know, half of those profits. I'm making up those numbers. But you get the idea, the higher the rate, the lower your profits and the less tax you're going to pay. So there's one idea. Now, you can't get carried away. You can't say we pay interest at a rate of 50% to wipe out all our taxable profits because the inland revenue are not that daft. They're going to say, well, wait a minute, 50%? That's, that's a totally uncommercial. They, you know, the tax authorities reserve the right to say, well, hang on a minute, 50%. No one pays 50%. If you're borrowing in the open market, that's just a silly number. But it does give the business the scope to reduce UK profits. And remember, that's the idea we're getting to here. Bring down the profits there so that the company isn't hit for too much UK corporation tax. So there's idea number one, okay? Intercompany interest charges. Here's another one. Can anybody set up a stall? Could I go down the road today and set up a stall saying, I am mini Starbucks. Buy your Starbucks coffee here. No, all right? Because there's a Starbucks brand. There's a royalty and licensing agreement, if you like. I need the right cups, I need the right ingredients, okay? The store's got to look a certain way. In other words, not just anyone can march out and set up a Starbucks franchise, okay? So, here's another little trick. Why doesn't Starbucks stick its um, licensing agreement to use the Starbucks name and operate a Starbucks operation globally in somewhere with a low tax rate like Holland. You have places that we pay much less tax in the UK. So why don't you stick some sort of licensing or, or uh, royalty uh, agreement. Have that held somewhere nice and low tax. You'll see why in a minute. Like Holland. And then what you do is this. You charge places like the UK to make and sell Starbucks coffee under the Starbucks brand. So maybe what you do is you say, right, UK operation, all right? Um, it will cost you, under the terms of our arrangement, it will cost you 6% of your sales figure every year to use the Starbucks brand. All right, so now you've got, now you've got another way to reduce the UK's profits because they're having to hand over 6% of their sales every year to this Dutch operation, all owned by Starbucks globally, by the way, that's the point, in order to make and sell Starbucks coffee, okay? And you might be thinking, well, that's 6%, that's not much. Is that gonna chew into profits over here, having to pay that? Well, it's quite a lot. I mean, Reuters estimate that in 2011, Starbucks made 636, okay, million pounds worth of UK sales. 
Okay? Suddenly, 6% of that number is like 37 million, roughly speaking. That's a lot of profit gone down the tubes. Okay? Now, it hasn't gone down the tubes, but that's another way of reducing the UK's profits. So you can say to the Inland Revenue, look, we're not making any money here. We're having to pay these royalty costs. We're having to pay this intercompany interest. All our profit's gone. Okay? So that's trick number two. And you might be thinking, why 6%? All right, why not 8%, why not 3%? Well, it's got to be something which is you can negotiate with um, the tax people. Okay, if you make it 20%, they're going to say, well, what are Costa Coffee and Cafe Nero used for argument's sake? That's just ridiculous. You're just making this up. But it's all negotiable. You know, because who's to say whether 6% is right or not? Probably Starbucks. Okay, they'll say, well, we're a unique company. You can't just mimic our brand anywhere else. There's no market value you can compare that to. It's the way we operate. And we think our brand and the right to sell coffee is worth 6% to anyone who sets themselves up as a Starbucks franchise. Okay, trick number three is this. Past losses. The way this works is very simple. If you set up a business in the UK, for example, and you lose money while you're trying to grow it because you're spending lots of money on marketing and all the rest of it getting set up, okay, here's the way it works. The loss that you make can be carried forward for tax purposes. All right. Now, put, to put it very, very bluntly, all that means is this. Imagine in 2010, and I'll make up the numbers here, in 2011, imagine for tax purposes you make a loss of 50 million because you, your trading is just not profitable. It happens. And in 2011 you turn things around and you make a taxable profit of 50 million. Under the tax rules you can net the two off against each other carry that forward into this year to give you an overall tax bill for both years of zero. All right. Now, there are three ways, just three, three ways that a company can legally, okay, with a bit of negotiation with the tax authorities, bring down its UK profits heavily for tax purposes, almost to nothing. Okay. You have big intercompany charges. I know this is all Starbucks globally, but the way tax works is each country is treated separately. So it's the UK that we're looking at. So you have a royalty, you have a, sorry, a debt agreement. So you, you have debt funding for the UK branch with a heavy interest rate. You have a royalty agreement with another part of the group that requires them to give up a chunk of their sales. Okay, and you allow them to use past losses to reduce profits. And all because you decide you don't want a Starbucks to pay a lot of corporation tax in the UK. You may pay it somewhere else, but that somewhere else will probably have a lower corporation tax than the UK does. All right? So there's a very quick whistle-stop tour as to how Starbucks and the like get away with it. Nothing about that is illegal, by the way, despite the fact there are House of Commons investigations going on and all that kind of stuff at the moment. None of it's illegal. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about that and also get the written version, um, I'll be covering the same topic in next week's edition of Money Week magazine. To download this free video to your favourite mobile device, find us on iTunes by searching for Money Week. And the entire video archive is also available free. Just visit moneyweek.com.